各位代表。Dear Deputy, on behalf of the Standing Committee of the 12th National People's Congress, I here give an explanation of the draft supervision law of the People's Republic of China. One, the major significance of enacting the supervision law. First, the enactment of the supervision law is a major move to implement the decision made by the Central Committee of the Communist Party of China on deepening the country's supervisory system reform. The deepening of the country's supervisory system reform proposed by CPC Central Committee with Xi Jinping at the core is a major political and institutional reform that concerns the overall situation. It's an important decision to strengthen the parties of self-supervision and state supervision. The goal of this reform is to integrate the anti-corruption resources to strengthen the party's centralized and unified leadership on the anti-corruption undertaking to build a centralized, unified, authoritative and efficient national supervisory system with Chinese characteristics and to ensure the supervision covers everyone in the public sector who holds power. Deepening the national supervisory system reform is an organizational and institutional innovation. It must break down the barriers of old mechanisms and institutions and set up new national supervisory organs. To enact the supervision law is an internal requirement and vital part of deepening the national supervisory system reform. The CPC Central Committee pays high attention to the enactment of the national supervision law. General Secretary Xi Jinping has clearly proposed the enactment of the supervision law at the sixth plenary session of the 18th Party Congress and at the fifth, sixth and seventh plenary sessions of the Central Discipline Inspection Commission, the Political Bureau of the CPC Central Committee, the Standing Committee of the Political Bureau of the CPC Central Committee, and the leading group for deepening reform have carried out studies on how to deepen the national supervisory system reform and the issues on enacting the supervision law that set out the guiding ideology, the fundamental principles and main content, and have clarified the direction timetable and roadmap of the enactment of supervision law. The 19th Party Congress has clearly clarified the country is to promulgate the supervision law to endow the Discipline Inspection Commission with the responsibilities, powers and investigation means and to replace the practice of a strong weight with detention. The supervision law is a state legislation on anti-corruption a law that governs and lays the foundation for supervisory work in the country. The enactment of the supervision law and the implementation of the decision made by the CPC Central Committee on deepening the national supervisory system reform so that the party's claims can become the will of the country through a legal process are of critical significance to and have far-reaching influence on the innovation and betterment of the national supervisory system. The linking between legislation reforms and implementation of anti-corruption work guided by the ideology of the rule of law and in accordance with the law. Second, the enactment of supervision law is a necessary demand to adhere to and strengthen the party's leadership on the anti-corruption undertaking to build a centralized, unified, authoritative and efficient national supervisory system. The leadership of the CPC is the most fundamental trait of socialism with Chinese characteristics and the biggest strength of social systems with Chinese characteristics to promote the reforms in various fields and the goal is to perfect and develop social systems with Chinese characteristics to consolidate the party's governance foundation and to improve the party's governance capability. To crack down on corruption with zero tolerance is consistent position taken by the CPC and it's the common will of the party and the people and must be carried out consistently under the unified leadership of the CPC. For the time being, the situation in fighting against corruption is austere and complicated. The present supervisory system cannot fully meet the demands of the undertaking and the construction of the party's working style and a clean and honest administration and anti-corruption. The first problem is that the supervisory range is too narrow. 
before the reforms of the national supervisory system, internal supervision had reached every party member and agency of the CPC, but according to the law of the People's Republic of China on administrative supervision, the people to be supervised are mainly staff in administrative organs. It does not cover everyone in the public sector who holds power. In China, the party's assumption of the responsibility for official affairs is an important principle of uh, adhering to the leadership of the CPC. As the ruling party, we are not only in charge of cultivating, promoting and appointing officials, but also educating, managing and supervising them. We punish those who have violated the laws and party disciplines and investigate the corrupt acts of those CPC officials, as well as others who hold power in the public sector. A second issue is that the anti-corruption force is scattered. Before the reform of the national supervisory systems, the party's the discipline inspection committees at different levels investigated the disciplinary offenses of the party members in accordance with the party charter and other party rules. And administrative organs investigated disciplinary offences and the illegal acts of staff in the administrative organs in accordance with the law of the People's Republic of China on administrative supervision. The People's Procuratorate investigated and punished the abuse of power in accordance with the criminal procedure law of the People's Republic of China. They conducted their responsibilities separately and their responsibilities overlapped and they did not form a cohesive force. At the same time, the Procuratory Department not only investigated abuse of power but also arrested and prosecuted those who commit such crimes. There was a lack of an efficient supervisory system. So to deepen the national supervisory system reforms and to set up an anti-corruption organ under the unified leadership of CPC, that is, the Discipline Inspection Committee is to combine the strength of administrative supervisory organs, corruption prevention organs, and procuratorates uh, that investigate corruption and bribery, dereliction of duty, and the malfeasance together with the strength of Duty-related crime prevention department is to amass all the anti-corruption resources and to integrate the implementation of discipli disciplinary rules and enforcement of the laws. In this way, we can clench the fingers to make a fist and to form a cohesive force. The third problem is that we lack the specific responsibilities centralizing and the implications in the past. The supervision law will clarify the nature and status of the Discipline Inspection Committee and will specify that and discipline inspection committees at different levels of specific organs exercising national supervisory power. This is consistent with the regulation in the party charter. The party's discipline inspection committees at different levels are the organs responsible for the party's internal supervision. The enactment of the supervision law is to define the system of the party's centralized unified leadership of the anti-corruption undertaking through state legislation to build a supervisory system with the party's unified leadership, total coverage, authority and efficiency and to convert systematic advantages into systematic efficiency. And three, the national supervision law is required to the current reality which calls for a summa summation of the practical experiences of anti-corruption endeavors to state in party congress and a solid legal guarantee for the anti-corruption struggle under the new situation. Since the 18th Party Congress, the Central Committee with Comrade Xi Jinping as the coup cool has adhered to the guidelines of no area of limits, total coverage and zero tolerance in the anti-corruption campaign. With an overwhelming, unwavering offensive against tigers, flies and foxes, the goal of effectively discouraging corruption is being achieved as the case confining the means of corruption is being completed and the dam against desire to corrupt is being built. And the deepening of anti-corruption campaign has been accompanied by the active advancement of reform pilot projects of the state supervisory system. In accordance with the Central Committee's decisions, the 12th MPC Standing Committee's 12th, 25th meeting in December 2016 passed the decision regarding the reform pilot projects in Beijing municipality and provinces of the Shanxi and Zhejiang. Practice over the past year, past year also has seen substantial progress made in a supervisory system reform as the experiences that are viable and applicable on a wider and larger scale have been gathered. In accordance with the spirit of 19th Party Congress through a distillation of the working experiences of pilot projects in the three regions 
the 12th MPC Standing Committee's 30th 30, 30 meeting in November the 2017 passed the decision to broaden the reform pilot projects of the national supervisory systems throughout the country, affording the guidelines for orderly expansion of the endeavor. So far, the overall supervisory commission structure at the provincial, prefectural and county levels has been duly established. The national legislative system will endow the supervisory commissions with the requisite jurisdiction and powers and clarify the provisions of the administrative supervision law and its measures that have proved practicable and effective. It will clearly provide the supervisory organs with the powers of investigation through the means of interviews, interrogations, inquiries, auditing, freezing, retrievals, administering, confiscating, searching, scrutiny, assessment and withholding. In particular, the measure of withholding is to supplement the double designation or Shuanggui as the rigorous procedures will resolve the legality con conundrum that has long beset us and will manifest our determination and confidence in advancing law-based governance. Furtherance of the reform requires law-based governance, which in turn derives its momentum from reform. The legislation of national supervision law will solidify into law the fresh concepts, initiatives and the experiences adopted in the process of promoting the party's work style, building an anti-corruption struggle since the 18th Party Congress. It will consolidate the achievements of the state supervisory system reform and guarantee the endurance of anti-corruption work along the path of law-based governance. Four, the national supervision law is establishing an institution that adheres to the organic unity of intra-party inspection and state supervision and places the trail of supervision with Chinese characteristics. The exercise of power must be restricted and supervised. In our country, the organs of the party, the People's Congress system, the administrative apparatus and the political consultative conference system the supervisory system, the law court system and the procuratorate system all hold and wield public power under the unified leadership of the CPC Central Committee. They, they exercise their powers for the people and on behalf of the people and are subject to people's supervision. In China's supervisory system, the intra-party inspection and state supervision both play a vital role. The intra-party inspection oversees the conduct of the entirety of the CPC membership, especially as the leading officials, while the state supervision covers all the holders of public office who exercise public power. As party members account for 85% of China's civil service staff and 95% of government officials, the intra-party inspection and state supervision are consistent with a high degree of implicit co coherence and it therefore is imperative for them to exist as an integrated whole. Such an organic unity of two systems demonstrates a distinct Chinese characteristic. Since the 18th Party Congress, the CPC Central Committee has adhered to a strict governance of the party and in the process of pressing on with the anti-corruption campaign has been improving the party's rules and regulations. Uh, the party's regulation-based governance has attained historic accomplishments. A sound supervisory system in China calls for a dual emphasis on strengthening both the intra-party inspection and the state supervision. In deepening the reform therein, the National Supervisory Commission will be established to coexist in the same office with the party's discipline inspection agency and to exercise the power of supervision and oversight on behalf of the party and state. The combination of the dual duties of discipline inspection and supervision will strengthen the oversight over all the holders of public office and deploy an unified power supervisory structure of total coverage through inspection tours, personnel stationary, stationing and regular inspections.
It will thereby effectively identify problems, rectify deviations, and publish corruptions to blaze a new trail of supervision with China's characteristics and ensure the enduring order and stability of the party and the state. At the same time, the current supervisory reform stands as an embodiment of the traditional institutional culture of the Chinese nation. By borrowing from the historic supervisory mechanisms, explores and innovates the new ways to restrict and regulate the exercise of public power. A national supervision law is meant to ensure the organic unity of regulation-based party governance and law-based state governance of inter-party inspection and state supervision in the form of legislation. Its integration of inter-party supervision with supervision through democracy, judiciary system, the masses, the public opinion, and will constantly enhance the supervisory efficiency and capability of the party and the state. Five, the national supervision law represents a strategic initiative to strengthen the constitution's implementation to enrich the, and develop the NPC system and to advance modernization of state governance mechanisms and capabilities. As a fundamental law of the nation, the constitution contains overall guidelines of state governance and embodies the will of the party and the people on the basis of ensuring the overall continuity, stability and authority of the Constitution, the 13th MPC is the first session has, in a partial amendment, enshrined into the Constitution the major theoretical, practical and institutional innovations achieved by the party and the people, and thereby keeps the Constitution abreast of the times. One of the primary changes is the addition of the provisions regarding the supervisory commission in order to adjust and improve the state apparatus. It is vital that the mechanism established by the constitution must be implemented through sound legal guarantees. The current MPC session's approval of the draft constitutional amendment before its deliberation of the draft supervision law affords the timely manifestation of the supervisory system established by the amendment. Such an orderly procedure is a practice of and a testament to the party's adherence to the constitution-based rule and governance. The People's Congress system is a fundamental institution in Chinese politics. It is a basic political institutional arrangement in adhering to the organic unity of party leadership, the running of the country by the people, and law-based governance. The people exercise uh, power through the National People's Congress and People's Congresses at various local levels. In accordance with the constitutional amendment, the draft national supervision law subsumes into the state apparatus the agency dedicated to national supervision, expressly providing that the supervisory commissions shall be formed by and be responsible and subject to the People's Congress at the corresponding levels. It broadens the means for the people's exercise of power and enhances the level of the institutionalization, standardization and the legality of the socialist democratic politics. It's the enrichment and development of the People's Congress system will keep the institution abreast of the time and carries far-reaching significance for the modernization of the state's governance and mechanisms and capabilities. Two, the procedures, guiding thought and basic concepts of drafting the national supervision law. In accordance with the Central Committee's demands of deployment, the legislative work of the supervision law has been headed by the Central Commission for Discipline Inspection, or CCDI. As early as during the research regarding the deepening of national supervisory system reform, upgrading the administrative supervision law into the national supervision law has been considered. For this purpose, the CCDI has communicated with the relevant departments including the NPC Standing Committee, the Central United Front Work Department, the Central Political and Legal Affairs Committee, the Central Leading Group for Comprehensively Deeping Reforms, and the Central Institutional Organization Office. 
The leading party group of the MPC Standing Committee has resolutely implemented the Central Committee's decision to deepen the state supervisory system reform and has given high regard to legislative work for the national supervision law. The 12th MPC Standing Committee has uh, treated the drafting and deliberation of the law as one of its most important legislative works. In October 2016, following the conclusion of the 18th Central Committee's uh, sixth plenary meeting, the CCDI and the MPC Standing Committee's uh, Legislative Affairs Commission set up the joint working team for the national supervision law. On the basis of its preliminary work, the working team conducted further investigation and drafting. After, after digesting the practical experiences of reformed pilot regions and suggestions and opinions of experts and scholars, it formulated the draft supervision law through repeated revisions and improvements. On June 16, 2017, General Secretary Xi Jinping presided over the meeting of the Standing Committee of the Political Bureau of the CPC Central Committee. The meeting examined and agreed in principle the instructions on a few major problems of the draft supervision law given by the MPC Standing Committee. And in late June, the 28th meeting of the 12th National People's Congress made initial deliberations on the draft supervision law. After initial examination, in accordance with the relevant work arrangements agreed upon by the CPC Central Committee, the Legislative Affairs Commission of the MPC Standing Committee sent the draft to 23 state agencies and standing committees in 31 provinces, autonomous regions and municipalities to solicit opinions. It also convened meetings to solicit opinions from experts on constitutions, administrative law and criminal procedure law. From November the 7th to December the 6th, the draft supervision law was made public on the MPC website for public feedback. After the 19th Party Congress, the visions and improvements were made on the draft in accordance with the spirit of the 19th Party Congress. Deliberations from the members of the MPC Standing Committee as well as opinions from the MPC deputies and CPPCC members. In December 2017, the 31st meeting of the 12th MPC made another deliberation on the draft supervision law. The meeting also regarded the draft as becoming quite mature. After having implemented the significant decisions on its deepening reforms of the National Supervisory System by the CPC Central Committee, with Xi Jinping as the core and fully absorbed the deliberations from members of the Standing Committees and opinions from all aspects, and decided to submit the draft to the National People's Congress for deliberation. On January the 18th and 19th, 2018, the second plenary session of the 19th CPC Central Committee adopted a proposal on the constitutional revision. On January the 29th and the 30th, the 32nd meeting of the 12th MPC decided to submit the draft amendment to the Constitution of the People's Republic of China to the first meeting of the MPC's deliberation. The draft the supervision law was revised in accordance with the spirit of the constitutional revisions. On January the 31st, the General Office of the MPC Standing Committee dispatched the draft supervision law to the members of the 13th MPC, who carefully studied, discussed and approved the draft as a whole, while raising some revision suggestions. The MPC Legislative Committee convened a meeting, deliberated on the draft, made amendments in accordance with the opinions of members of the MPC Standing Committee and MPC deputies, and reported the revisions to the chairperson of the MPC Standing Committee. On February the 8th, 2008, 2018, General Secretary Xi Jinping presided over the meeting of the Standing Committee of the Political Bureau of the CPC Central Committee, listened to a report given by the MPC Standing Committee, agreed in principle 
The request for issues related to the draft supervision law of the People's Republic of China are made important instructions. And further improvements were made on the draft in accordance with the spirit of the CPC Central Committee. With the aforementioned work as the foundation, the draft supervision law of the People's Republic of China was submitted for deliberation in this meeting. The guideline for enacting the supervision law is to hold high the great map banner of Chinese socialism thoroughly into the spirit of the 19th CPC Central Committee adhere to the guiding ideology of Marxism, Leninism, Mao Zedong thought, Deng Xiaoping theory, and the theory of a three represents the scientific outlook on development and Xi Jinping thought on socialism with Chinese characteristics for a new era, upholding the leadership of the party, the people being the masters of the country, and governing the country according to the rule of law, promote balanced economic, political, cultural, social, and ecological progress, as well as the coordinated implementation of the four-pronged comprehensive strategy, strengthen the party's centralized and unified leadership on the anti-corruption campaign, realize the full coverage of supervision for all public officials and exercising public power, realize the integration of governing the party in accordance with its rules and govern the country in accordance with the law, as well as integration of inter-party supervision and national supervision, promote modernization of state governance system and capability. Based on the aforementioned objectives, the legislation should stick to the following principles. First, to adhere to the correct political orientation. The guidelines, basic principles and reform requirements of the central government should be strictly followed, and fundamental political rules of upholding and strengthening the party's centralized and unified leadership on anti-corruption should be carried out as the foundation of the entire process and the aspects of legislation. Second, to adhere to consistency in constitutional revisions. The constitution is the general basis for various systems, laws and regulations. The contents and delivery of the draft supervision law are coordinated and integrated with the various stipulations of the supervisory system commission in accordance with the constitutional revisions adopted in this uh, conference. Third, to adhere to the problem orientation. The focus is to solve the outstanding problems that exist in the state supervisory systems. Fourth, to adhere to scientific legislation, democratic uh, legislation and legislation in accordance with the law. In order for the contents of the draft to be scientifically reasonable, coherent and coordinated, Decisions of the central government must be firmly implemented, opinions are fully absorbed from all aspects, social concerns sincerely responded to, and affairs handled strictly according to law so as to draw up high quality supervision law. Three, main contents of the draft supervision law. The draft supervision law comprises nine parts. The general rule, supervisory agencies and their related responsibilities, scope and authority, jurisdiction, procedure, international cooperation in anti-corruption, supervision of supervisory agencies and officials, legal responsibilities and subsidiary rules, altogether 69 articles. The main contents are as follows. One, specify the guiding ideology and leadership system of supervisory work. To uphold and strengthen the centralized and unified leadership of the party on anti-corruption, the draft stipulates uphold the leadership of the CPC on state supervisory work, adhere to the guiding ideology of Marxism-Leninism, Mao Zedong thought, Deng Xiaoping theory, the theory of three represents, the scientific outlook on development and Xi Jinping thought on socialism with Chinese characteristics, characteristics for the new era, and build a centralized, unified, authoritative and highly effective supervisory system with Chinese characteristics. Two, specify the principles and the rules of supervision. Concerning the principles of supervisory work, the draft stipulates 
The Supervisory Commission will independently execute supervisory rights in accordance with the law, free from interference of any administrative agencies, social groups and individuals. The supervisory agency will cooperate and interact with judicial and pro uh, procuratorial organs as well as uh, law enforcement departments in cases of crime and transgressions. When assistance is needed, the relevant agencies and units should provide it according to the requirements of the supervisory agency. The state supervisory work should strictly follow the constitution and laws, taking facts as the basis and the law as the basis as well, with all citizens deemed as equal in the eyes of law. Power should be should correspond with the responsibility and strict supervision. Punishment be combined with education, leniency with the rigidity. Concerning the rules of supervisory work, the draft stipulates to address both the symptoms and root causes. Comprehensive adjustment, strengthened supervision and accountability forcefully fight against corruption, deepen the reform, improve the rule of law, effectively restrain and supervise power, enhance moral education and education on the rule of law, carry forward traditional Chinese culture, construct an effective long-term system where officials do not dare, are not able and are unwilling to be corrupt. Three, specify the formation and the responsibility of the Supervisory Commission concerning the formation of the Supervisory Commission. According to the constitutional revision adopted in this conference, the draft stipulates the State Supervisory Commission produced by the NPC is responsible for State Supervisory work. The Supervisory Commission comprises the Director, several Vice Directors and several members. The director will be elected by the NPC. Vice directors and members will be nominated by the director, then appointed and dismissed by the NPC Standing Committee. The term of office for the director of the Supervisory Commission will be the same as that of the NPC, and they shall serve no more than two consecutive terms. The supervisory commissions at various local levels will be produced by people's congresses of corresponding levels responsible for the state supervisory work in the administrative regions. The supervisory commissions at various local levels comprise the director, several vice directors and several members. The director will be elected by the people's congress of the corresponding level. Vice directors and members will be nominated by the director, then appointed and dismissed by the Standing Committee of the Local People's Congress. The term of office for the director of the Supervisory Commission at local levels will be the same as that of the Local People's Congress. With regard to responsibilities of a Supervisory Commission, it shall, according to the draft, perform the duties of supervision, investigation, and disposition in accordance with the law. First, conduct anti-corruption education for public servants and perform supervisory inspections on the legal performance of functions, exercise impartial power, clean administration, and moral integrity. Second, investigate duty-related violations of laws and duty-related crimes such as suspected corruption and bribery, abuse of power, negligence of duties, cronyism, transfer of benefits, the practice of favoritism, and uh, falsification as well as the waste of state assets. Third, make decisions on disciplinary actions against public officials who violate any law and hold liable those who fail to perform their functions in an effective manner. Or leaders 
who neglect their duties and responsibilities, transfer investigation results on suspected duty-related crimes to prosecutorial authorities for review and initiate public prosecution in accordance with the law and offer supervisory suggestions to, to the units of the supervised. Four, realize the full supervisory coverage of public officials exercising public power. To meet the requirement of realizing the full supervisory coverage of public officials suggested by national supervisory system reform, the draft of supervision law regulates that supervisory authorities can conduct supervision on the following public officials in accordance with their administrative authority. A. Civil servants of CPC organs, organs of people's congresses, administrative authorities, CPPCC authorities, supervisory authorities, judicial authorities, Curatorial authorities and organs of democratic parties and associations of industry and commerce, the persons managed by the civil servant law of the People's Republic of China. B. Personnel engaged in public affairs at organizations authorized by laws or regulations or lawfully entrusted by state authorities with the management of public affairs. C. Managers of a state-owned enterprises. D. Personnel engaged in management in public entities in education, scientific research, culture, healthcare and sports, among others. E. Personnel engaged in the management of a collective affairs at basic level self-governing mass organizations. F. Other personnel who perform public duties in accordance with the law. Five, endow the supervisory body with necessary authority to ensure efficacy by the supervisory authority, the draft endows it with necessary authority. A, when investigating duty-related violations of law and crime, the supervisory authority can take any investigative measures such as questioning, interrogation, holding in custody, searches, collections, sealing, seizures, inspections or examinations. B. Where the persons being investigated are suspected of a serious illegal or criminal abuses of public office such as corruption, bribery, dereliction of duty or malfeasance and the supervisory organs have already possessed some facts and evidence on the illegalities or crimes that still have major issues and need further investigation after review and uh, approval by the supervision authority in accordance with the law, they may have the persons retained in custody at a designated location in any of the following circumstances. The case is major or complicated the persons might flee or commit suicide, the persons might collude in testifying or fabricate, conceal or destroy evidence, the persons might obstruct investigation. C. For measures such as a technical investigation, retaining in custody and restricting exit from the mainland territory are required, the supervisory authority must follow strict approval formalities and provisions to hand them to the relevant organs for execution. Six, strictly regulate the supervision and inspection procedures to ensure the proper use of power by the supervisory authority the draft strictly stipulates the procedures of supervision, investigation and disposition in chapter on supervision procedures, which includes the disposition of reports or complaints, the management and handling of leads, the decision making to file and investigate a case, adopting measures such as searches, sealing, seizures, making an audio-visual recording of the entire process, strict handling of stolen assets or goods, etc. With regard to custody retention, to strictly regulate measures in custody retention and protect the rights of the subject, the draft stipulates 
where a supervisory organ at a city level with district or below employs measures of custody retention shall report to the supervisory organ at the next higher level for approval. Where a supervisory organ at a provincial level employs measures of custody retention shall report to the PRC Supervisory Commission. The period of custody retention must not exceed three months. Under special circumstances, it may be extended once, and the extension period must not exceed three months. Where the supervisory organs find the employment of custody retention is inappropriate, they shall promptly lift them. The unit or family of the investigator shall be informed within 24 hours, except when there is a possibility of the investigation being impeded. The supervisory authority shall ensure the provision of food, drink, rest, safety and medical services for the persons retained in custody. 7. Strengthen the oversight of supervisory authority and personnel in line with the phrase to forge iron, one must be strong oneself. The draft strengthens the oversight of supervisory authority and personnel in the following aspects. A. Accept oversight by the People's Congress. The supervisory organs shall accept oversight by the People's Congress and their standing committees at the corresponding levels. The standing committees of People's Congresses at all levels hear and deliberate special work reports of the supervisory organs at the corresponding level and may, as necessary, organize law enforcement infra inspections. When the People's Congresses at their standing committees at the corresponding level hold meetings, the delegates to the People's Congresses or members of the standing committees may, in accordance with the procedures prescribed by law, raise inquiries or question issues in supervisory work. B. Improve self-supervision. The draft accords with the principle of party discipline supervision and enforcement and the raises that effective measure in practice into legal norm. The draft regulates that record keeping on making inquiries about case or interfering, interceding or intervening, the rescuing, the the refusing of the supervisory personnel, management regulations for the departure period and the restriction on the re-employment of supervisory personnel after their resignation or retirement. The draft also regulates the appeal and accountability system for misconduct by supervisory authorities and personnel. It is also explicitly stipulated the supervisory authority shall make public the information on supervisory work in accordance with the law and accept democratic, social and public opinion oversight. C. Establish working mechanisms for mutual assistance and mutual restraint between the supervisory authority and the judicial organ. Procur procuratorial organ and law enforcement departments. The draft regulates that in cases transferred by the supervisory organs, where after review, the people's procuratorate finds it necessary to supplement or verify, they shall return them to the supervisory organs for supplementary investigation, and if necessary, may conduct supplementary investigation on their own. And there are circumstances under which the criminal procedure law stipulates no pro prosecution, the people's procuratorate after reporting to the People's Procuratorate at the next higher level for approval is to make a non-prosecution decision in accordance with the law. By collecting, fixing, examining and using evidence, the supervisory organs shall be consistent with the requirements and standards on evidence for criminal adjudication. Four, a D, clarify the legal responsibility of the supervisory authority and their personnel. In Chapter 8, Legal Responsibility, the draft clearly states that where the supervisory authority or its personnel exhibit any of the nine misconducts, which include causing case handling security incidents in violation of regulations, or conceding or not reporting security incidents, making untruthful reports, or mishandling incidents. 
The responsible leadership personnel and the personnel directly responsible are to be dealt with in accordance with the law. The draft also states that where the supervisory authority and the supervisory personnel in exercising their authority encroach the lawful rights and interests of citizens, legal entities and other organizations causing harm, they shall pay state compensations in accordance with the law. The draft to a supervision law of the People's Republic of China and uh, a aforementioned explanation is ready for the deliberation and approval.